guys are a couple minutes late. Thank you, Megan, for getting me and making sure that I was here on time. Um, anyways, we're going to start off really uh, uh, with some good news. Uh, each year we receive a Municipal uh, Equality Index score from the Human Rights Campaign. And this year the, human, uh, the Municipal Equality Scores uh, just came out. Uh, they actually evaluate, the Human Rights Campaign will evaluate 506 cities in the nation for how inclusive our laws and our policies are, uh, particularly when it comes to uh, serving the LGBTQ uh, community. Now, when I became mayor, I believe the score that we had was a 22. And last year, we actually were able to raise it to a 72, but we were still one of uh, the lowest scored cities in the entire state of Kansas. Uh, we just found out that today it will be released officially that our score went from a 72 last year to 100 this year, which means that we are one of the most inclusive cities in the Midwest. So some of the factors that contributed to our raising, rising score over the past few years includes the passage of our non-discriminatory ordinance, uh, healthcare benefits at the city that are inclusive of all people, uh, having an LGBTQ liaison uh, in our police department, and of course, uh, much more other uh, areas that they, they score us on. So this is great. It means that Wichita is not just open for business for everyone, but also uh, gives us another, uh, uh, just another uh, uh, talking point when it comes to attracting and retaining a next generation of talent. Uh, so we are very proud of uh, what we were able to accomplish. And for folks who are interested to look more into that, that would be at hrc.org slash MEI. So next we're gonna talk about Black Friday. Uh, sadly, next Thursday, we won't be having a briefing since it's Thanksgiving. And I want to remind folks who will be shopping during Black Friday uh, that it's a great time to take advantage of some of the remaining funds we have in our rebate programs. Our Save Water or save Wichita water uh, rebate uh, still has a bit of money in it. Uh, so for folks who, who are looking to take advantage of that, uh, qualifying purchases such as uh, dishwashers, rain barrels, uh, toilets, and more uh, qualify. So please visit uh, savewichitawater.com for more information. Uh, we also have funds left in our lawn care rebate program. As folks recall, this was a, a newer program where we were uh, uh, incentivized with a $50 rebate, uh, different electric lawnmowers, uh, trimmers, uh, leaf blowers, that type of stuff to try to uh, just encourage uh, more uh, sustainability in our city. So full details on what are eligible items, as well as the application is on wichita.gov slash clean and green. So wichita.gov slash clean and green. Next, we're going to talk about the Battle of the Badges. So Black Friday is a holiday tradition for many, but the spirit of the season is about giving. And there's no greater way to give back than through life-saving donations of blood and platelets. So that's why we're excited to once again kick off the Battle of the Badges. So here to tell us more is Lindsay Miller with the Red Cross and firefighter Jeremiah. Hello, good morning. I brought more than just Firefighter Jeremiah with me. We have uh, Captain Chris Fleming, um, Lieutenant Joe Kennedy, uh, Captain Travis Rakeshaw, and Ben. I just met him this morning, so apologies. Um, but thank you all. Um, our Battle of the Badges will be kicking off on Tuesday, December 13th, and we'll run through um, January 1st uh, at the Red Cross Donation Center at 707 North Main. Um, we encourage you to make your appointment, um, and if you're not here, local in the Wichita area and the surrounding areas, you can also um, go to redcrossblood.org and search by your zip code and find a blood drive near you where you can still help support the uh, blood donations in our area. Um, do you guys want to say anything? Sure. Okay. Can you put this up here so we can make it right? <laughs> make it look good. Um, we are super excited to get this uh, battle started again. Uh, the fire department has, we've won the last three years, which is a great, uh, the, the trophy just looks so good in our trophy case, so we just need to keep it there. Um, in all reality, the real winners are all of the uh, recipients of the blood products that we collect. Um, they say that one of the biggest reasons that people don't donate blood is that they've never been asked. So that is what we're all doing up here is really putting out that out for everyone to uh, a really custom, you know, an invitation to come during the battle and uh, don't forget about us and uh, donate blood. Absolutely. Anybody else? Let me say a couple more words if that's all right. 
The goal this year for blood products is uh, approximately 1,500. Over the course of the past 27 years with the Wichita Subject County community, we've been able to get 31,000 donations, which is awesome. So I will echo uh, Captain Fleming's statement about coming out and asking uh, the community to, to step up. Typically in the holiday season, we see a drop in donations, which is normal. Everybody's got family. They're leaving town, coming into town, parties, activities, shopping, all that kind of stuff. But that brings those donations down. The problem with that is we still have car accidents. We still have bloodborne cancers. Those things don't go away. So we are still needing the community to come and help us out. Vote fire. <laughs> Yeah, I'm Travis Rake Straw with the police department. And of course, we want you to vote for the police department when you show up to give blood. Um, uh, we're sick of seeing the fire department win this thing. <laughs> um, but we have all experienced uh, uh, trauma on, on our job. We see the need for blood that's out there. We need, um, uh, we need the community to step up uh, and donate during this time. You never know when that person who needs the blood is going to be uh, a family member or, or a loved one. Um, and if it's, it's reassuring to know that that blood's going to be there to save lives. And so we really need everybody to step up. So this, again, it starts December 13th and runs through uh, January 1st. Um, and hopefully you all will we'll make some appointments. You do get a commemorative Red Cross t-shirt when you come in and donate at the Battle of the Badges this year. It is our 28th annual. Um, it is the oldest running which uh, Battle of the Badges for the American Red Cross. So we're super proud and, and uh, enjoy this wonderful partnership with all of our city and county um, organizations. The other thing I would like to mention just really quick is that we want to thank our presenting sponsor, Black Hills Energy. Um, they are have supported us two years with a very nice don donation to help cover the costs of, of running the event and the t-shirts. So thank you very much, Mayor. Of course. Yeah, I just want to thank uh, uh, both the fire and police for um, hosting uh, the, this blood drive. Of course, it's a very important uh, function uh, to, to make sure that the Red Cross supplies stays, uh, uh, has the supplies that they need, uh, but also it's a lot of fun. Uh, so uh, normally when you go, you go, you donate blood, and you'll see police officers, you'll see firefighters who are also there, and you get to uh, hold, a, I think, a selfie stick on what, if you want to pretty much show what team you're on, if team fire, team um, police, uh, and then you uh, vote. Of course, uh, as Fire mentioned, they've won three times in a row, uh, three years in a row, uh, so we're looking forward to uh, more competitions. Thank you. And again, it's for a good cause. I'm going to go ahead and put this right here. So, all right. <laughs> With that, next we're going to welcome up Daniel from our Park and Recreations Department to talk about the Miracle League. Uh, this past summer, we announced the Miracle League. It's a sports league for individuals who are definitely uh, differently abled uh, to give them a chance to play baseball. Uh, so we're pleased to announce that the league is expanding to give athletes even more opportunities to play. So Daniel, why don't you tell us more? Thank you for having me, Mayor Whipple. Excuse me. So yeah, excuse me, uh, Wichita Park and Recreation, um, we've been focused these past couple of years on um, expanding our inclusive and adaptive programming. Um, so with that, we've had a lot of success with, like you mentioned, the Miracle League Baseball um, that we've done for the past uh, decade or so at this point now. Um, but uh, with that, we've had a lot of success with it, like I said. Um, so we've decided to expand into bowling. Um, so now we're, we're excited to announce our Miracle League bowling uh, program that's going to start up here this winter. Um, program will uh, take place at Seneca Bowl, and uh, it'll take place uh, every Saturday starting at 10 a.m. in January. So um, a couple of notes on, on this league and what makes it unique. Um, it's specifically for uh, kids with disabilities aged 5 through 21. Um, and uh, yeah, it's just it's a great program that uh, kids can participate in uh, so that they can participate in sports leagues uh, with, with their peers. So, so it's a great league. Um, with this bowling league specifically, uh, a couple of the things that we're going to play by a couple of the rules, I guess you could call them. Um, every player bowls, no one's excluded, everybody wins. Um, so yeah, it's just, it's, it's a lighthearted recreational um, program um, for, like I said, for kids with disabilities. So um, registration, let me touch on the registration. Registration uh, is actually currently open and it will close on December 19th. 
Um, that is, unless we hit our capacity before that, we are limited to only 64 kids at this point um, based on uh, lane uh, availability. But, um, but yeah, so we um, are opening it up to 64 kids that want to come play. It's just a $20 uh, registration fee. Um, and another cool thing about this is we partner each one of the athletes with a, uh, what we call a buddy, which is a volunteer in the community um, that, uh, that partners with that athlete, making sure that, you know, obviously the ultimate, ultimate goal is to keep everybody safe and that kind of thing, but uh, just to facilitate or to assist in, in whatever capacity, uh, you know, needed. So um, if you are interested in, in becoming a volunteer, we do have, go check out our website. It's uh, wichita.gov slash Miracle League. Um, we do have a, a document on there that you can fill out to, uh, to apply to be a volunteer. Um, and also with that, um, businesses, if, if any businesses are looking to um, partner with us, uh, we are looking for sponsorships um, to help cover, you know, jerseys and, and equipment, that kind of stuff for, for the kids. So, um, you know, reach out to me, my email, dsac at wichita.gov, um, or go to the uh, Miracle League website. Again, that's wichita.gov backslash Miracle League, and uh, find the information there on how to reach out for us, or to us. So, other than that, thank you, Mayor. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it, Daniel. Um, Miracle League is a great opportunity for young Wichitans with special needs, uh, and we're thankful to the Park and Recreation Department for all they do to be more inclusive to our entire community. And just as a, on a bit of a personal note, one of my favorite press conferences that we did uh, was last year when we announced this program uh, because we had one of our employees who, who talked about how uh, meaningful this was for her child. Uh, so it's it's great to have that uh, hands-on um, uh, just or stories about what, how this uh, influence and, and affects uh, kids within our community. So we're looking for even uh, building more upon that success. And we uh, hope that folks uh, reach out to either be sponsors or are, are you all looking for um, uh, the community buddies that you mentioned? If folks want to come and just be helpful, uh, is that sign up as well? Yeah, exactly. Volunteers to help out to partner with the, uh, with the athletes or, uh, or businesses that want to look at sponsoring as well. Excellent. We want to keep this program going because we know it has a, a huge impact on uh, particularly young kids in our community who uh, might feel more comfortable uh, in a league like this than in a different league. So thank you for all your work uh, that you all are doing. So finally, uh, if the light shows are on your list of things to do this winter, don't forget to buy your tickets to the brightest place in Kansas. Botanica's annual holiday light show illuminations has been voted a top 10 best light show in the country, and it is the perfect way to create lasting memories and new traditions with friends and loved ones. You can vote for them this year by visiting the link on their Facebook page. With over two million lights, we've incorporated several all new magical light displays. Uh, man, Megan, you're in a mood when you wrote this, huh? Uh, experience the holiday glow uh, from all, from our new 60 foot mega Christmas tree. Uh, it's 62 feet actually. It is one of the largest branch tree displays in the Midwest region. Uh, the tree will be programmed uh, with festive images and set to holiday music. Uh, to create a spectacular show. In addition, uh, an interactive stepping stone light display will light up orbs that guests can promote themselves uh, will be new favorites as well. Uh, before the night is through, don't forget to take a ride on the carousel and visit Santa uh, any night through December 23rd, uh, through December 23rd with your wish list. Snacks and beverages will also be available for purchase at Botanica's multiple concession stands and adult drinks will be offered for purchase by bar on demand as well. So if you don't like crowds, uh, then weeknights are a great time to visit. Or if you and your friends are looking for a fun way to get back while seeing the lights, we are always looking for volunteers. Uh, information may be found at botanica.org slash volunteer. Reserve your time slot today and pre-purchase your tickets online. Walk-in tickets will not be available. Print your tickets at home or simply pull up the barcode in your confirmation email or text on your phone uh, when you arrive to the Southgate ticket booth entrance. There's so much to do in Wichita this holiday season. I hope everyone finds time to go out and support some of the great holiday events we have. So with that, we'll take questions. Could you kind of elaborate on why you know, the quality index score can be important to citizens here in Wichita, but also maybe people who are looking at moving here? So there's a few things when it comes to the equality index score that is really 
makes this like a, a really big deal. Uh, one of them, of course, is the fact that Wichita, as a top 50 city, we're open and inclusive to everyone. Uh, we're a modern city and we need our policies to show that and then to get that confirmation from the human rights campaign, which is is the source that actually goes in uh, and rates uh, different cities, to get that confirmation that we are not only on the right track, but we have a perfect score at this point is huge. Uh, because when folks are looking, uh, particularly uh, that next generation of talent that we're hoping to attract to a place like Wichita, uh, they want to know that the city uh, reflects their values, uh, that the community reflects uh, their values. And we know at large uh, that Wichita's are inclusive, that we look out for our neighbors, regardless if our neighbors uh, might be different than us. Uh, so with that, uh, having confirmation uh, through the human rights campaign, I think when folks are looking at, well, would I want to move to Wichita to pursue this job and move somewhere else, this becomes one of those factors. Uh, also, it's an economic uh, boost as well, uh, not just on the uh, employer side, um, but also when it comes to businesses that are looking for uh, places to relocate. Uh, we know that uh, non-discriminatory ordinances and also uh, these type of um, of uh, scorecards uh, play a factor when it when it comes to businesses choosing a city uh, to relocate uh, because you know businesses want to attract and retain talent and they want to make sure that they are in a place that uh, is open and accepting and that will um, be uh, a place that they can grow as a business as well uh, so the economic side of this is a big deal uh, we know that Wichita just a few months ago uh, w when we had our um, economic update uh, we know that we were told uh, that Wichita is leading the state in economic growth and development uh, we're leading the entire state in that, according to Wichita State. Uh, so we also need to be leading the state when it comes to attracting and retaining that next generation of talent. Uh, and this is a key to that puzzle, uh, or a piece of that puzzle that we're going to uh, not only build upon, uh, but also uh, look at some of the other factors that, that we could add to this mix so that we can continue to grow. Was this sort of a priority for you and for the city after seeing last year's score, but especially the city as an employer, because that's last year's record or scorecard show that, you know, that's where the city was kind of docked. I wouldn't say the most points, but was docked for, um, you know, lower hanging fruit is, I think, what the quote was. But. Yeah, so again, this is not only, for me, my personal values is inclusion and diversity. Uh, and I know that other uh, um, folks w w agree with that. The majority of Kansans, I think, agree with um, being inclusive. Uh, the score is based on policy, so it's more than just symbolic, of course. Uh, and this has been a goal since I became mayor, and even before then. I think I was the first candidate to come out uh, with a proposal for a non-discriminatory ordinance uh, so that we can start changing, uh, I think, that image uh, of uh, not being inclusive. Uh, so coming in at a 22, uh, which we were one of the lowest ranked in the entire state. And then once we started working on this project, we got into a 72, I, I don't celebrate C's. Uh, I celebrate uh, hundreds, you know, I want to be the best. I want Wichita to be the best. And by that, I mean, we, we need to be better than every city in Oklahoma. We need to be retaining our, our young people and make sure they're not moving to places in Missouri. Uh, we need to be the best when it comes to growing uh, opportunities. And you can't grow opportunities uh, unless you're also going to grow opportunities for everyone within our community. Uh, so by doing that, uh, we're going to continue to create uh, inclusion uh, and diversity policies. Uh, we are going to continue to keep our ear to the, gr to the ground when it comes to um, the needs of uh, folks throughout our community and uh, our, the entirety of our community and respond to those. Uh, because again, we want to be the best, and when I'm mayor of, of the, the city and I'm looking, we're be, being beaten by Hutchinson or by some of these other small cities, uh, uh, that, that's, that's not acceptable. Uh, so being able to turn around and get a perfect score, I haven't seen what uh, the other scores have been for this year yet. Uh, last year, uh, I think Lawrence was a 98, so unless they found an extra two points, we might be the best. Uh, if not, you know, I'll settle with 100 for now. Uh, so we'll, we'll see where we go from here. All right, anything else? You guys want me to reread some of the descriptions about Botanica? No? It was... Thank you all.